Okay, so in the previous video, you uh, saw us do the setting up the gain structure of the vehicle. I've got 6 dB of gain dialed into my Rockford 2500 BD CP. So it's ready to dyno now. But if you watched the previous video, you also know that at no point does my head unit put out less than 1% distortion. It's, it's around 1.4 when we measured it with uh, some of our other test equipment that we have. The problem with that is that the certified dyno run, part of being certified is that your, your dyno of your system is less than 1% distortion. That's, that's what makes it a certified run. It uses the DD1 technology, the DD1 Plus technology that's built in while it's measuring power. And as soon as it sees more than 1% distortion, it quits reading power and says, that's the most power that you can make at less than 1% distortion. And we can try it on the Jeep. There's points in the volume where it's le less than 1% because it's right on the edge, you know? It's, it varies from 1 to 1 1.4 in here. So it might read a little bit of power, but you see it's not gonna be right. So, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll try to do a certified run in here, but we know it's not gonna work right. We're doing a mono, must install jumper, that's this, for mono mode. We'll do a uh, four ohm, certified dyno run ready at four ohms. Use test track one or two, pause track. I have it paused. Ready, start dyno, then unpause. Okay, so starting, and then I unpause the track. As you can see, it's just the, the power is at 39 for a minute, and then it hit like a clean point, and it's at 800, and then it found another clean spot and it hit 1073 but it wasn't working the way it's supposed to and you can see the distortion lights were almost on solid the whole time so we cannot do a certified run in this vehicle because of this distortion issue it has because of that reason we have a uncertified dyno run mode exactly the same setup mono jumpers in place next four ohms and we can run it uncertified, and the difference is instead of using the DD1 Plus technology to look for distortion, it uses another technology that we've developed inside where the microprocessor actually examines the signal and looks for clipping. And as soon as it sees the signal clip, it says that's your maximum unclipped power. So let's, let's try that out. Start it and unpause the track. Here we go. And now you can see it dynoing real nice. The numbers are spooling up nice and evenly. It's ignoring the distortion lights. It's using the other technology that we've built in that we haven't had a name for yet. And there you go. This amplifier just did 1287 watts into 4 ohms right at the point of when it hit clipping. So that's your maximum clean power at 12.1 volts. Now, we're gonna run it again and I'm gonna rev the engine up a little bit and see what kind of effect some more voltage would have on it. So I'm just gonna reset the numbers and restart the track. see with a little more battery voltage on it we gain some power and uh, that's how the amp dyno works so I have a VM1 plugged in up front it's reading about 14.0 and back here we're at 12.57 so that's the drop in the wiring from the ampli you know from the uh, the battery to the amplifier so that'd be something I could work on even though it is aught gauge in here clearly it could be a little bit better or maybe I could you know do some changes electrically that would increase my power but there's your uh, 4 ohm dyno run let's go ahead and reset it and do a 2 ohm oh 
uncertified mono two ohms Certified 2 ohm run, 1911 watts, not bad. Down at 11.5 volts and it still did 1900 watts. <clears throat> These uh, CP amps are pretty strong. So it's looking good. We can do a 1 ohm run, but uh, it's going to really sag down the voltage quite a bit. Um, I don't think it's going to show anything, you know, productive. So instead I'm just trying to show you about the amp dyno itself, not so much my electrical system. So. Let's go ahead and try a, uh, another mode here that we have. Dynamic power run. Mono. And let's try a 4 ohm. And what this is, is a burst test. It uses a, a specific test standard signal to burst the amplifier at intervals and it will measure the maximum dynamic power it has. That would be like the, I don't want to say peak because that's a number that's abused with, you know, just marketing stuff. But it's a maximum dynamic real power number. It's a RMS number, it's real. It's just on a peak or a burst what you could get out of it. So here we go with that one. we do on a four, 4 ohm burst. 1485, not bad. Let's try a 2 ohm. Ready? All right. Power that time, two ohm burst, 2454. It's pretty awesome. Let's try one ohm burst. That's what everybody wants to see, right? Lots of different loads you can choose from, all the way down to half ohm. One ohm burst, here we go. There we go, it's over 3,000, 3,100 on the one ohm burst at 12.8. So, you know what we've seen here is we know what this amplifier can do for uh, quick musical peaks. Um, and we know what it can do continuous at the wheels, you know what I mean? Like your Camaro, you buy it and the sticker says 400 horsepower on the window, but what's it put to the wheels? And the same thing on the amp. You know, the burst sheet says 33 or 3,400. But that's on a test bench, that's at 100 hertz, that's at 14.4. It's a bunch of things that aren't that realistic for in the car. In the car, we're doing 40 hertz, we're hooked up to the car's electrical system, and those were the continuous tests, which are the certified or uncertified. They're both you know, accurate. And we saw on those that you know, my electrical system is not up to the task. It does pretty good. We did you know, almost 2,000 watts or so, but uh, I, it could make some improvements. So this is a good opportunity for a dealer to say, hey, let's, uh, you know, there's some power that you're not getting out of your system here. So that covers uh, dynamic power and continuous power and certified and uncertified. So I hope you like it.